to bring in a Bible story and relate it to what we're talking about. And so our topic is dealing with emotions and our feelings. And sometimes the way we can respond to someone or something can get us into trouble. So this story comes from 1 Samuel in the Old Testament of the Bible. And it is bringing in our friend David, King David again. And he is sending his men to go visit a man named Nabal. Now Nabal is known to be a nasty, rude man. Have you ever known someone or met someone that just was downright rude or mean? And so in this situation, we're going to find out how Nabal's wife, Abigail, saves him um, from basically getting hurt by King David's men. So check out this video and we will be back to talk about it. This is a 66 picks mixed up in the one. The books about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's a life of Christ to hide in your heart and in your mind. Old Testaments are set up for the big event. When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement. It's history, this story, new story, God's story. Oh, the story of how much he loves me. Let us know about Pages, let this show go live Let his word explode from this video into your life In the Bible, there was a rich man named Nabal Who was known for being rude Arr. Nabal had a large flock of sheep and goats And a wife named Abigail Unlike Nabal, Abigail was known for being sweet not far from where Nabal and Abigail lived, King David and his men were camping. David needed some supplies, so he gathered some of his men to send to Nabal's house. He told them to greet Nabal with kind words, and Nabal should return their kindness. So the men went to Nabal, greeted him with nice words, and asked him for some supplies. But Nabal was nasty. Urgh, go away! He shouted insults at them and told them to leave. The men returned to David and told him the things that Nabal had said. David was furious. 
He told his men to grab their swords so they could get even with Nabal. Meanwhile, back at Nabal's farm, Abigail heard how poorly Nabal treated David's men. Oh no! She knew her husband's bad attitude could mean trouble for them. So she gathered food and supplies and loaded them up on donkeys. David and his men stormed through the desert, ready to get revenge on Nabal. Suddenly, they saw someone approaching. It was Abigail. Abigail bowed down to King David and begged him not to hurt Nabal. She asked David to stop and think before he acted out of his anger. David took a deep breath and thanked God for sending Abigail to calm him down. David accepted Abigail's gift of supplies and went home instead of doing something he might regret later on. Hooray! Because Abigail asked him to think about forgiveness, David chose peace instead of anger. So that was a pretty interesting story. We see how David was extremely mad at Nabal for the way that he spoke to his men. I want you to think about, has there ever been a time where you became so upset that you thought about doing something that could end in getting into a whole lot of trouble? some bad consequences could happen as a result of your actions? Well, this almost happened to David, but the thing that saved him is that Nabal's wife, Abigail, was able to calm King David down. And just like King David, we also need to learn how to take a minute to step back and not react because of our emotions or feelings. King David did not allow his emotions to take control. Ah! <laughs> 
So let's break down some of these feelings that we watch from the clip inside out. So let's talk about anger. We all get angry and upset at times, even over the littlest, tiniest things. But one thing that we need to learn is that we need to be slow to anger so that our emotions don't take control of us. And how do we do that? We can stop by first listening and then two, doing the right thing. Now let's talk about fear. So most of the time we will do absolutely everything we can do so that we don't become afraid of something. But being human, it's going to happen. But we also need to learn that when we are afraid, who can we turn to? We can turn to God and we learned last week that God will comfort us. Okay, now the next one is disgust. Sometimes I just can't help to make a face or have an outburst when something truly disgusts me. So, disgust is a feeling and when we don't see things that or when we see things that we don't understand we just may simply be disgusted at times and it's normal but we need to learn and remember that Jesus loves everyone so even those people that disgust you and they get on your nerves just think how much Jesus loves you and you could be disgusting and get on other people's nerves, right? So think about how much God loves them too. So sadness, let's talk about it. No one ever likes to feel sad. And sometimes you just can't not feel sad about certain things. So one way that we can deal with sadness is by talking to someone and our sadness can actually lead us to um, a place of happiness. If we talk to the right person and we try to think about those things that will help us deal with the sadness, get over it and think about something positive. Joy is the last feeling that we're going to talk about and we learned last week that this is like the best emotion that we can ever feel and guess where our joy comes from? It comes from Jesus and so a lot of times when we feel anger or we feel sad or disgusted when we go to Jesus, Jesus can fill us with joy inside that will make everything turn out just right. It'll be like a celebration. And so one thing that I like to do when I'm joyful and happy, I like to dance. So let's play this song, listen to it, and let's celebrate how much Jesus loves us. Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice! Let's do that again! Philippians 4, 4 Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice! I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? The joy, 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 joy down in my heart. We're down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. What else you got? I've
I've got the piece that passes understanding down in my heart. Where down in my heart. Where down in my heart. I've got the piece that passes understanding down in my heart. Where down in my heart to say And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. I've got the wonderful love of my blessed Redeemer way down in the depths of my heart. Where? Down in the depths of my heart. Just stay. I like so happy.